Application of Matrix Operations in Forest Management Trees are very useful resources to human. However, unplanned and continuous cutting of trees will soon deplete the available forests around the world. Therefore, sustainable harvesting policy is introduced to solve this problem. But how do we make sure that it is sustainable while maintaining maximum yield at the same time? To solve this problem, we can apply matrix operations to get optimal sustainable yield. Trees in a forest consist of various heights, and as taller the tree is, the higher the economic value of the tree is. Suppose that there are n different price classes corresponding to a certain height intervals. For a sustainable harvesting policy, the forest is to be restored to its previous state by replanting seedlings to replace the trees that are harvested. The forest configuration before the harvesting and after harvesting and replanting the seedlings must be the same. Let xi i equals to 1, 2 until n be the number of trees within i class before the growth period. Non-harvest vector x equals to x1, x2 until xn. Because the total number of trees in a forest is fixed, x1 plus x2 until xn equals to s, we label this as equation 1. Consider that each tree grows up one height interval, or retarded, remains in the same height interval after each growth period. We consequently define the growth parameters, gi, i from 1, 2, until n minus 1, as the fraction of tree in i class that grow into i plus 1 class. Then, 1 minus gi is the fraction of trees in i class that remain in i class after the growth, as in they are retarded. With these growth parameters, we can form the following n times n growth matrix. We label this as 2. Since vector x is the number of trees within i class before the growth period. Then gx is the number of trees within i class after the growth period. We label this as equation 3. Suppose that during the harvest we remove yi, i equal to 1, 2 until n, from thy class. Harvest vector y equals to y1, y2, until yn. The total, y1 plus y2, until yn equal to s. The number of trees removed during the harvest is also the number of trees added to the first class, the seedlings planted after each harvest. <coughs> if we define n times n replacement matrix, we label this as 4. Then our y specifies the configuration of trees planted after each harvest. We label this as 5. At this point, we can write the equation that characterizes the sustainable harvest policy, configuration at the end of growth period, minus harvest, plus new seedling replacement, equal to the configuration at the beginning of growth period. Mathematically, gx minus y plus r y equal to x. This equation can also be written as i minus r, y equal to g minus i x. We refer this equation as the sustainable harvesting condition. Any vectors x and y with non-negative entries, and such that x1 plus x2 until x n equals to s, which satisfy this equation, determine a sustainable harvesting policy for the forest. Note that if y1 is larger than 0, then the harvester is removing seedlings of no economic value and replacing them with new seedlings. Because there is no point in doing this we assume y1 equals to 0. And we label this as equation 7. With this assumption, we can verify that equation 6 is the matrix of the following equations. Because yi is larger than 0 for i equals to 2, 3 until n, equation 8 requires g1 x1 larger, or equal to g2 x2, until gn minus 1, xn minus 1 is larger, or equal to 0. We label this as equation 9. Total yield of harvest. Since we remove yi, i equals to 2, 3 until n, during the harvest, and each tree in i class has an economic value pi, total yield of harvest equals to p2y2 plus p3y3 plus until pnyn. Using equation 8, we may substitute for yi in equation 10 to obtain. We label this as equation 11. Optimal sustainable yield is a yield obtained by harvesting all of the calf class and none of the other height classes. The largest value of the yield for k equals to 2, 3 until n is the optimal sustainable yield, and to attain it, all the trees of the calf class have to be completely harvested. Since no class but only the calf is harvested, we have. We label this as equation 12. In addition, because all of the calf is harvested, no trees are ever present in the height classes above the calf. So, we label this as equation 13. Substituting equation 12 and 13 into sustainable harvesting conditions, equation 8 gives. We label this as equation 14. Equation 14 can also be written as. We label this as equation 15. From equation 15, we can get. We label this as equation 16.
If we substitute equation 13 and 16 into equation 1, we can solve x1 and obtain. We label this as equation 17. For optimal sustainable yield, we combine equation 10, 12, 15 and 17 to obtain. And we label this as equation 18. Equation 18 determines the optimal sustainable yield in terms of known growth and economical parameters for any k equals to 2, 3 until n. Therefore, the optimal sustainable yield is the largest value of for k equals to 2, 3 until n. The corresponding value of k is the number of the class that is completely harvested. As a summary from short video that had been presented by us, we can conclude that trees are very important to human. So, we need to conserve it in order to make sure it will long last to our future generation. Optimal sustainable yield play a huge role here. It can be proven by one of our findings, which is the European Forest Genetic Resources Program, which is Euphorgen, a use that to ensure the adaptability of forests, it is important to characterize and conserve a sizable amount of the adaptive genetic variation that currently exists in tree populations. This data can be used to make informed decisions about the management of forests. Based on all of this way and data, matrix operation is applied to ensure uh, restoration uh, and maintenance of healthy forests to sustain the health, diversity, and the productivity of land. So here we will see application of optimal sustainable yield in daily life. So we have a few questions. Uh, sorry, we have few examples about optimal sustainable yield in daily life. So we will see one by one. For the first example, a certain forest is divided into three high classes and has a growth matrix between harvests given by capital G 1 over 2, 0, 0, 1 over 2, 1 over 3, 0, 0, 2 over 3, 1. So, if the price of trees in the second class is $30 and the price of trees in the third class is $50, which class should be completely harvested to attain the optimal sustainable yield? So, uh, here is the first question. And what is the optimal yield if there are 1,000 trees in the forest? So this is the second question. So uh, for optimal sustainable yield, we have uh, the formula, the formula of optimal sustainable yield, which is PKS over 1 over G1 plus 1 over G2 uh, plus 1 over GK minus 1. Uh, so the value of k start with 2, 3, and then n. So uh, for the p, it represents price. k represent number of class that completely harvested. And s represent total number trees in forest. While G1, G2, or GK-1, it represents the growth parameter. So from here, uh, $30 is our P2. Why P2, not P1? Because the value of K starts with 2. So $50 is our P3. So uh, which one is the growth parameter? Uh... The growth parameter is 1 over 2 and 2 over 3. 1 over 2 is our growth parameter 1. And 2 over 3 is our growth parameter 2. So 1,000 trees here is uh, our total number of trees in forest, which is S. So let me see the solution. Here is the solution for example 1. P2 is $30, P3 $50, growth parameter 1, 1 over 2, and growth parameter 2 is 2 over 3. So we just uh, substitute the value in our formula. So why as here we not substitute with uh, 1000? Uh, because uh, we want to compare which is the largest of these two quantities. So uh, we not substitute yet. So... Uh, from the value that we get from each yield, yield 2, we, we get 
S and yield 3 we get 14.29 S. So we choose 15 S because it is larger than yield 3. Then uh, we times 1000 with 15 and we'll get $15. So what we can conclude that uh, yield 2 is the largest of these two quantities. So the second class should be completely harvested to obtain optimal sustainable yield. So uh, the optimal yield for 1,000 trees is $15,000. So what we can see here, we apply from what that uh, we search for application in linear algebra in this situation, which, which is optimal sustainable yield in forest management. So let me see example 2. So in example 1, Example one is uh, here the the picture that we attach, it is from uh our our elementary linear algebra textbook and then raw and call. To what level must the price of trees in the fifth class rise so that the fifth class is the one to harvest completely in order to attain the optimal sustainable yield? So uh this question is uh a bit same like the previous question but uh, we don't know what is the pk okay the pk we don't know so we let it as x to be the one to harvest it five it is 14.7 so we just substitute x here because we don't know the pk okay s is over here and the growth parameter so that we will get x over 15.1451 is bigger than is greater than 14.7s then we'll get x is greater than 222.6 dollar so we run off we will get x equal to 223 dollar therefore the price of three in the fifth class should be 223 dollar so that it will be the one to harvest in order to attain the optimal sustainable yield okay so finish for example two uh this uh, only two example that uh we explain so we'll go to our reference so this is our references our reference one is textbook elementary linear algebra application version focusing on chapter 10.7 uh, under forest management so this is our main reference then our reference to is article uh, why active forest management is necessary it is a website of uh, the european forest genetic resources program or euphogen so this is uh, for our extra reading about our application that we choose for this assignments so uh, next we also have reference tree which is uh, United States Department on Agriculture and Ecological Perspective. Uh, also for extra reading for our application. And then we have reference 4. Uh, this reference 4 is actually same like reference 1. Uh, it is a note about forest management but... Oh, sorry, it's not about all application in linear algebra. But we want to compare both notes. So we can uh, choose the best part that we can bring to our video. So our reference 5, uh, we have an uh, article from Science Direct, which is matrices of orders, analysis of network, and ranking problems. Also, uh, extra readings for our application. And the last one is uh, models for strategic forest management uh from an article from springer so from this uh, website of reference six um we look about our application model so yeah that's all from us which is group 12 aaron irfan nava and yashni so here yeah, special note for dr nunadia i hope not doctor will uh, read uh when doctor see this video so that all from us. Thank you very much. Have a nice day and assalamu alaikum.